Hi, and welcome to this week's Mortgage Broker Broadcast. My guest this week is Ross McMillan from Bluefish Mortgage Solutions. And Ross is back on the podcast. He was on season one back in September 2021. In that episode, he was talking about his journey from estate agency into mortgage services and being a mortgage broker. And so past 18 months, he's moved from being um, employed to the self-employed mortgage broker, and now he's got his own firm business and brand. So I wanted to get Ross back on the podcast to, to have a chat about that. But more importantly, Ross right now is focused on his website and looking at his SEO content. And yes, he's got his social media platforms. Yes, he uses those mainly for his reviews and the Google reviews he has and posting those. So I wanted to get Ross onto the podcast to talk and, and explore a little bit more about his website, why he uses that, why he focuses on the website. And yeah, let's just get Ross back onto the podcast. You're listening to the Mortgage Broker Broadcast with me, Craig Skelton, the podcast which helps mortgage brokers at all stages of their mortgage broking career. So welcome back onto the podcast, Ross. How are you? I am astonishing, Craig. Delighted to be back. Can't Good believe you. it's been so long. But... I know. Well, obviously, we just had a bit of a chat before um, we hit record, and September 2021 is when you was on the podcast um, the last, the first time, and the last time. So, like, wow, like it has been such a long time, and so much has changed for you. So much has changed in the world. So much has changed for me at the business. Just like un- unbelievable that we've not had chance to get this recording updated uh, for the last eighteen months. So. Glad to hear you're outstanding as always. How are you doing? All right? Yeah, not really good. And like you say, 18 months just, just doesn't seem it was it was that long, that's for sure. But um, yeah, a lot has changed, which we'll no doubt go into. But um, I enjoyed being on the podcast the last time and uh, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll have fun today as well. Absolutely. And the, for those that people are watching on YouTube or on um, on social media platforms, they can see that the, what's changed this time is you've got your branded... Uh, a tire on merchandise that absolutely yeah no the last one i don't think we were on video thankfully but uh, this time <laughs> we are <laughs> um, so as well as a couple of stone i've, I've also put on a, a, my, my branded gear since uh, the 18 months has passed so yeah bluefish mortgage solutions and uh, is, is now my own firm my own brand um, and I, I, I guess we'll chat about that as we're going forward and how that's evolved but yeah absolutely I think that's it. Like you say, it's when you look it's look back at when where we, you came on the podcast the first time, we were talking about your transition from estate agency into mortgage broking into like self employed and things like that. And then obviously since then, Bluefish has been created, evolved, developed, grown, whatever whatever word you want to want to use for it. So for those people that haven't listened to the podcast, you obviously was on. Alex Curtis as well. I'm saying Alex Curtis's podcast. It was actually Tessa that was hosting most of it when you was on there <laughs> not too long ago. But um, yeah, so for those people that don't know who you are, do you want to just give a brief background about about, about you and, and your firm? Yeah, sure. Well, the brief background is I've been in property for about 20 years or so, um, of which roughly two thirds of that has been as an, as an estate agent um, across Scotland as a value and, and all that kind of stuff. And then five years ago, uh, roughly five years ago, I decided I'd had enough of that and I moved into the mortgage side of things. Um, initially employed and then self-employed within another, another firm. Um, and then in the last, uh, well, it's actually about almost a year ago, um, I was always interested after the podcast in, in um, uh, My Brand, My Way, which which was something you're watching. I have my own firm, basically, have my own brand, having a bit more control over things started chatting to you again after, after uh, well, almost a year ago, as I say. Um, and then from about August last year, the Bluefish arrived uh, as my own brand, my own firm, and, and I'm delighted with how it's going. So we're about six months in now, and uh, the future's rosy, and it's, it's been a great start. Um, really pleased with how that's all gone, and, uh, and that's it. Basically, I guess, I, in, in terms of the mortgage side of things, I still, nothing much has changed. I still specialise in helping people um, through the whole journey, not just the, the mortgage side of things, because of my background in property, I can I add all that to the to the mix. Um, but the main difference now is I've got control, a bit more control over own market and brand and, and everything else that brings with it. So, which was the main objective of, of creating Bluefish, um, to be honest. So, 
yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at. No, when you just sort of said there, like six months, I can't believe that he's, Blue Fish has only been sort of trading six months. It just feels you've gained so much traction in such a short period of time. I and mean, obviously that's what we're going to talk about in a different way. But I can't believe it's, it's only six months. It feels as though it's been around forever. Well, I think that's maybe... <laughs> Yeah, working with me sometimes can feel like a long time, but um, but, um, yeah, I think technically we're probably in the seventh month now, but obviously some of that time is is, uh, laying foundations and stuff, so actually kind of trading was was towards the mid to end of August last year, which was 2022, so um, yeah, it it does, it it seems like it's longer almost, but um, but there's been a lot achieved in that time, it also seems short too, and I think that's important, it's just it is just the foundations, it's just the start. Um, there's no mad rush, there's no great agenda to conquer the world. It's just about doing things my way, which is which is the whole point. And, and that's been great. It's been everything that I, I'd hoped it would be so far. So good, good. And so what the and thank you again for coming back onto the podcast. And the reason why I wanted to come back, obviously, is to talk about like what's been happening over the last 18 months, but just particularly looking at um, how you are creating traction with Bluefish and how you're doing it a little bit different to maybe a lot of other brokers that are focusing on the social media. And I know you've got your social media platforms and you do use those, particularly I, I see your reviews constantly on on my social, on my Instagram and on my social, on my, my LinkedIn in terms of what the feedback you gain from the clients. But what the reason why I want to talk about is that you are really doing well in the the whole context of having your own website, working on your own SEO, working on your own keywords, and and, and a lot of putting a lot of time and effort into building your website out rather than focusing on your your social media platform. I'm not sort of saying you're not looking at your social media platforms because clearly you are, but would would you say that most of your time is spent working on your website compared to your social media platforms like Insta and, and your LinkedIn? Yeah, and I think, well, that was a big driving force to, to create the brand was to have have a website basically um, that, that I could work on and, and um, create content. And, and that was effectively, I work from home, so effectively the website becomes my office. That's my building that I'm building for the future that people can uh, access both now and in the future. Whereas the social is a bit more transient, I think. Um, and yes, it's important to have a presence on there. But I think personally, that was I, I could do that without necessarily having my own brand and my own firm to some extent. Um, mm-hmm. There was perhaps less restrictions on that. Whereas having my own website and the website that I've got now and being able to do the content and the uh, specialise in certain fields and write content around about that wasn't wasn't an option really when I was what would be known as a registered individual under another person's firm, um, which was fine in lots of respects, but I just didn't have that control from a marketing perspective as to where I wanted to take my own personal business, which I think the website gives you, and social media might give you it, but it doesn't give you it to the same extent. As I say, I think I look at the website as my office, that's my building bricks in the street, if you like, um, because that's where lots of people are looking. I'm much more focused on Google as a tool in terms of lead generation, um, that people are finding me there. And you mentioned my reviews, they're critical in that whole process. I've got 84, 85, five-star Google reviews, whatever it is on there now, and that's really important for me because I think that's where, that's personally where I'm looking for a service. Google is where I go to. I think that's where most people go. And then to have that presence there as a brand and as me as an individual, was important to then build on that and the website allows me to do that as well because now rather than perhaps going to a a page within somebody else's firm or just a single page that wasn't really offering much in its own right I've got the full brochure website if you like which um, can show people a bit about me they they get to know more about me they get to see uh, client reviews they get to see the types of uh, mortgages I can help with and um, read about what their circumstances are and hopefully find solutions that within that to then get in touch and, and take it from there. So, yeah, you mentioned I'd been on the podcast um, with Alex and Tess, well, briefly Alex, but <laughs> um, 
But that's been really important because that's all been about search engine optimization and, and utilizing that as a, a means to to reach out to people um, and to let them know that I know what I'm talking about um, and they can find me and, and, and get in touch. And, and that's been across uh, the UK, not just locally as well. That's been one of the boons of, of using that technique as perhaps social is more local um, and, and more within your own area, or it's, it's certainly a more restricted audience. And it's also, in most cases, an audience that is um, not directly looking for your service. They're just on their social media, browsing and whatever else. And I think that's a key point with utilizing the website and Google that people are, are if they're spending any time on your website, it's because they're looking for a mortgage. They're not just browsing through and they like the look of your, your picture or whatever. So, um, I think that's a critical distinction and, and it's been great that there's been some some traction on that already. Um, but just having the avenue, even beyond search engine optimization and writing content, having the website there that people can interact with me directly as my own brand and my own firm was really, really important and was a big part of my reason for, for setting up the firm and having control over that side of things. I think that that's it. It's, it's a really good point that you make about, because wh- when I look at your website, I see, I, I buy into the brand, I buy into you as a person, I see you as a person, I can actually see who I'm dealing with on there. And I think that's, sometimes that is missed by mortgage brokers because what they will do is they'll, they'll have a, a website because they think they have to have a website. They work so hard on the socials and getting the personality across, getting the trust and, and all those things. But then when the client hits the website, they don't, they don't see that person that they've seen on, on the platforms. And I think... You're right. It puts you in control of like somebody hitting your website. No, you know that they're looking for a mortgage broker. They're looking for some help to get the mortgage sorted out. Whereas if they just happen to follow you on social media and just scrolling through up team sort of accounts that they follow and that gets it hit in their the, the face every single day when they're scrolling through on social media, it's a very more it's a more more direct but more pers- purposeful interaction with the client because actually you know if somebody's in your website and they can see about you and who you are they're looking to to do some transaction with you in whatever guys that looks like yeah no i think that's true and the the joy of the website is as well that there's and certainly the search engine aspect of it and the content that's perhaps a bit more specialist yes there's things on there about first time buyer and kind of relatively general home movie mortgage all that kind of stuff but i do have some more specialist types of mortgage and, and uh, clients and just yesterday i had i had an inquiry via directly from that so people are going there looking for that specific information and coming to me i've had a couple recently i've had cases completed recently that were directly from people searching um for a particular type of mortgage or a particular type of advice and they've the good thing about that, which you, I don't think you can get across in social media, unless people are following you consistently, then they're, they're not going on. They're just seeing you flittingly and, and in and out. And yes, they may get a picture of you overall, which is definitely worthwhile and it's good. But if they're looking for a specific solution, then I think most people like to see the web a web page that they can then take the time to read over and then that prompts inquiry from there. But I think in terms of personal, personalization, so I think as a one-man band, I think... There could be nothing else. Yeah, I think if you're part of a larger firm or you're principal of a firm with, with a number of brokers, then perhaps your personal presence is less significant. But I think as an individual, uh, self-employed, effectively broker with your own firm, I think you need to be front house of that. That that's and make it clear that that's who people are dealing with. And they might not like you. <laughs> they might not like the way it looks on the website. They might not like something about. So that's fine. But other people will, and that's the people that you want to work with. So um, when you're not looking for volume, it is about quality of relationship and an inquiry. And I think that comes from a personalised, to some extent, website, or certainly your presence on a personalised basis. But equally, it needs to, it can't just be a big a website with a picture of your face on it and, and a wee bit of blog. That's, that's not going to be sufficient. It needs to be offering a bit more um, to be successful and, and specifically about answering the questions that people have initially to then prompt and go, yeah, let's have a chat and, and see if you can solve my problem, which is, I mean, Bluefish Mortgage Solutions is, is, is the name of the firm. It's, it's about providing solutions for people. So um, 
it's about answering the questions that they've got and, and, and uh, taking it from there. So, yeah, I think it's critical. And is that when you look at when I look at your website, I've got there's an about you with there's various there's the mortgages and then there's a specialist mortgage section. Is that how that section came about in terms of the specialist side of things? So when how is that because from from clients' questions, client feedback, or how did you well, how did you create that? Why did you create that section? Yeah, but one hundred percent everything on my website has been based on client experience, if you like, um, and anything that's on there, I've, I've done a mortgage, at least one, if not more, uh, around that particular topic. And it's because of that conversation with clients and the questions they're asking that perhaps sometimes as brokers we take for granted or we, we think are too simple and nobody's interested in, um, that, that we can then uh, answer those questions. That's what's prompted the content and that's what, what we want to get out there. And, um, there is a desire to find the answers. So it was very much... It, it was, it's never been reverse engineered, the website, other than there's a template in which you would want to cover the, uh, if you like, the, the general stuff that, that most mortgage-related websites would have about first-time buyers and home, um, home movers, remortgage, you're going to have that as a template. Um, but certainly from a Google perspective, you're going to struggle to be ranking purely for, for that kind of business because it's quite generic. So it's the most specific stuff that you can perhaps have success with. But that's all been as a result of, of client uh, interaction and calls. And then that helped build the website moving forward because there's always new questions. There's always different perspectives that people have on things or, or different problems that they bring to the table um, that you can then start to address within, obviously, conversations because the website doesn't give the advice. The website doesn't build everything out together. It is to some extent still generic because it can it can only be that because it's everybody's circumstances individual but um it's covering it's giving people enough that they want to you know what you're talking about and you can uh, kind of come back for more and but it's all through client conversation as right. like a couple of weeks ago i adapted a couple of pages purely on the basis of a question that was asked directly by a client about a specific thing um and i think that's that's how how these things can evolve um, so yeah, and did I, I think that's they like say it, it's it's good to hear that that's how how it's evolved. What when I look at your website and we've got joint borrower, we've got fixed term, we've got foreign currency. The, there's a lot of content in there. There's a lot of information. Does that take you a massive amount of time to create those sections on your website? It doesn't. I think initially, to be fair, it took longer than it than it does now because I was still getting to grips with some of the technicalities of, of getting onto the website and just the structure of things and how SEO works and how you want to be um, tailoring your contact to some sorry content to some extent to, to what Google wants as well as obviously the client because the clients are behind Google if you like and um, they're they're prompting the questions through Google so you need to know how Google is reading your page without getting too technical and the format that works for that so that Google will then put you in front of people asking those questions, which is kind of the whole purpose. Um, but now, I mean, generally, I'll, I'll, I just add to as and when. I, I don't necessarily sit down and think I'm going to write some website content today. It just comes out of conversations, depends what's happening that week, what the timing is. Um, and because I have a structure now to most of the pages, not quite a template, and obviously everyone's slightly different, that element of things is all quite quick. It is just about answering the questions. And you can't answer every question. So you, you can have a page that perhaps doesn't have a huge amount on it to begin with, but it's going to evolve over time. It's the, the important point is starting it. Um, and, and then you can work on it from there. And also by starting it, if the content that's on there is reasonably good and you then start getting more interaction with clients and stuff, then that that evolves that page and you can you can sense that that's a page that's worth focusing perhaps more time on as well. But practically it doesn't take, yeah, th maybe three or four hours um, per page, but some of that's down to, to structure and moving things about and deleting things that you shouldn't <laughs> and trying to work out what you've done wrong and, <laughs> and all that stuff beyond just the content itself. So. I, but it's like, it's like the same as anything, isn't it? Once you, if you update your website, doing it yourself like you are, or 
if you're creating social media content or writing a blog, once you've done it once, once you've done it twice, all these things become easy because if I'm a, an experienced mortgage broker and I'm looking at your website for the first time, thinking there's a lot, I'm, I can't believe that that's something that you've done yourself. It's just an absolute awesome, looks great website. Clearly it's got exactly what it, <clears throat> excuse me, what it needs in terms of you got the contact form straight away. We can see the reviews at the top. I know how to get hold of you. I could have got a bit about you, about what you do and what you offer. And as I go down, so I could be, as a mortgage broker who's thinking I need to create my website, I could be intimidated about thinking I'm never going to get it as good as like I can't believe that Ross is and it's where do you start? It's like how how do you start and all those sorts of things. So with the website, always you always knew that that was going to be your real sort of marketplace, like you said before. Hundred percent, yeah. I think um, as we, we touched on at the beginning, it was it was a primary motive for for creating my own brand and my own firm is to have have that presence online that that yes I could have it to some extent social media or whatever and I can have it within another firm but I, I couldn't have complete control about it and I definitely saw it as a website and I know other guys and girls have different views as to where their focus is on and, and that that's all fine I think that's the joy of the market there's there's different things for different people and the joy of uh, the, the, the industry actually there's different ways to run your business there's different ways to to the things to focus on, but mine was absolutely always going to be the website. And um, in fairness, that I mean, uh, well, Alex the, from the, the lead engine, who who've, um, you're aware of, and I was on the podcast, they made it relatively easy to have a kind of template form of, of, of website that I could then work with moving forward. Um, but that was just the bare bones. That doesn't do anything for you, so to speak. It just gives you the tools to, to make something um, moving forward. So. It's, uh, yeah, there's some technicality about it, but you can certainly get the bones there, but then the content itself, you, you need to come up with yourself. You need to do the work. It's like everything. Social media is no different as well. If you, if you I don't put a huge amount on there. I, I perhaps did initially, but then I, I found it quite time consuming as well, much more time consuming and almost stressful than, than the website, because the website, I, I don't feel like I've got to get something on there every day, whereas social media, to some extent, it felt like I've got to get three posts a week, five posts a week, whatever else. And I, yeah, I, and I wasn't necessarily seeing results from that, and I just wasn't totally comfortable with it. And then you're sometimes churning out things that I didn't think were necessarily the best content or, or things like that. So now I just pretty much stick to my re reviews, and I'll have bits and bobs that I'll stick on there on the social media. But um, but my point with social media or anything else is if you don't work at it, it won't do anything for you. And the website is no different if you're not producing the content and keeping the website up to date on a regular basis. And I guess have a clear vision as to what it's supposed to be achieving. Um, it's fine to have a website that is purely just a brochure website there that people click on and that's what it's there for. If they happen to find you on social media, you've got a website um, that kind of functions enough for that purpose. But and if that's all you want, that's fine. But if you want something that's going to perhaps generate more uh, specialist content and things, then you, you do need to work at it. There's no doubt about that. We you talked about something in terms of time and knowing as I do now, I know you're never going to be 100% happy with your website because you're always looking to tweak and improve it and uh, as it evolves. But there were, And obviously, like you said, you would use Alex at the start to then look at a, a template. How long did it take you? Probably it's hard to, because obviously it depends on how long you're, you're spending each day, each week on that. But how long did it take, did you feel it got, it took you to then think, do you know what? I've started with this template, but now I've got it formatted and I've got the, te like it's looking how I want it to look and it's, it's the, the it looking the part and there's just little tweaks now moving forward rather than changing the whole setup. Well, I was quite quick to get the website up there. I think it was important to get it up <laughs> and out there. Um, I think this pursuit of perfection is is, is, a, is a, a folly. <laughs> it will never come. Um, so it was important to have something out there. That that, that was the priority. And that, that stood me in good stead further down the line because, without getting too technical, because the website's existed for a, a wee bit longer than just 
initially one month, you're not going to get much traction after the month, but because it's been there and it was out there, and then I started to add more of the content a couple of a month, kind of six to eight weeks down the line was when I started to add the more specialist contract round about November time last year, so about four months ago. That's when the, the more specialist stuff started to, I worked on that and I was starting to get a bit more clarity as how that could function. But because the website had already been launched for a couple of months, um, in whatever form, which was it was a fine enough form, but that certainly evolved. Um, that helps with the, the new content coming through that you've just not a kind of fly by that's just just sprung out of nowhere. Um, but it can take a while for that to build up. Mine has worked a bit quicker than than most, but I think if I'd waited for the website to be perfect, I'd probably be another three or four months behind still on on all of that happening. But um, but once. You'll always change it. You will always change it. I think if you've got your brand in there, you're comfortable with your branding, web pages change all the time. Um, and uh, there's no harm in that, I think. But if nobody's seen it, then you, you, it might as well not be there. So I yeah. think um, within reason, you want to get it out there as quickly as possible, even if it is at its most basic format. But it's it's sufficient. It's got a, a home page. It's got an inquiry form. And it's got a wee bit of information on it that, that perhaps would uh, entice people to contact you further, then that's a starting point, and then you, you work on it from there. I think that's, like, like you say, it's just about having that platform to build on, isn't it, that you're happy with. I think that's, people think that they, they, they've got to start and launch the absolute perfected website or social media video and Insta Reel or Facebook Reel or whatever they're looking to create they'll strive for that perfection and then not do anything until they reach that perfection, which, like you say, is just unrealistic. It's not going to happen because you, it's about getting that out there. The quicker you get it out there, the quicker you'll learn. The, like if you were still perfecting it now, you'd still be tweaking, still be doing the things you're doing, but nobody would be seeing it. Like, and it's just there's no point to that. It's just a, a waste of time for you and, and just you could be doing far better things. So, like... When you look at traction from point of view, so we, we look back and think, right, we've got, and it's interesting what you said there about a clear plan and expectations of the site, because I think that can, we'll probably come back to that, because that's something that can be challenging as well, is that when you look at traction and starting to generate leads and actually people contacting you, how soon was that in the process that you think can actually I'm st I've got my first one, I'm starting to get two, I'm starting to get leads coming through now organically from the work that you're putting in. It was well, probably two two tiers to that. So having the website in a reasonable form from the outset meant that people finding me on Google just perhaps locally or, or uh, just looking for a mortgage advisor near them or whatever like that would, would find my, my Google listing and then there was a website on there in which they could inquire. So pretty much from the beginning, I was getting inquiries via that that presence, which is where the Google reviews that I had helps because that all adds to it. Um, so that was one element and that continues to be the case. The actual specialised content and the SEO side of things, um, it was roughly about th coming up for four months it would have been of, of the content been out there before the first inquiries started to come in for that, which kind of industry-wide would, would be considered quite quick. Um, most of these things you would expect a minimum of about six months before you start yeah. to see any traction. But and by traction, um, it's about people finding your seeing your page, and, and that is meaning that you're on the first page of Google or, or you're within a kind of reasonable search. Uh, scope if you like for people on google and they're seeing you and not necessarily always clicking on your page but you're there on that as amongst the options for them so it, it was within roughly about four months three to four months was the first inquiries and certainly one of those cases has already gone uh what's well, gone to offer and will go to completion soon so um from that perspective alone it, it was it's been worth it <laughs> even if, if that's the only case that was to ever come from that particular page then that's absolutely been worth it uh, I'm sure there'll be more to come, but I, I think I'm just kind of revisiting a little bit of what we talked about there. I had a phrase when I was in a state agency that used to annoy my colleagues all the time, but it was largely in terms of, in that context, it was about clients perhaps um, 
they should be maybe reducing the price to capture the new market and things like that. And they were always a bit hesitant to that. Well, I'm losing money if I do this, but the real risk in that instance, and I think it applies all the time, is in doing nothing. People are, if you don't have something, if you've not got it, then you're not risking anything by doing something about it. Um, in that context, it was reducing prices or changing prices or changing marketing strategy. And the same applies here. There's no risk, really, in having a website that's not perfect um, and not or not doing things to... to to promote yourself in whatever means, I think the risk is absolutely in doing nothing because nothing's going to change then if you, if you literally do nothing. Um, and, and, and times, you'll never time a market, you'll never time uh, the right time to do it. Um, you just need to get it out there and then uh, see what happens from that point. Definitely. I think that you sort of said about expectations because that's like you when you first get traction and getting the leads come through was far quicker than the nav- national average and what normally happens when you're sort of starting to create something new and putting contact out, content out there it does take normally longer than three to four months to start really getting some um, some leads coming through but i think and that's the expectation i think and my i'm probably my question to you is like what was your expectation because i think sometimes brokers can get too hung up and, and giving and throwing in the towel too quickly because their expectation of a website or social media or content or things like that take longer than what their expectation was. So what was your expectation around creating a website? No, it's a really good question. I mean, expectation was, well, this, I guess the answer to that is my purpose for the website was not necessarily for search engine optimization that that was a not an afterthought that was like great to have that was a good to have the website as a as i've touched on earlier as my kind of front of house and my building was was that was the priority so my expectation was not necessarily that the website in itself would generate inquiries that was going to be a bonus further down the line it was that there was a platform there for people to contact me and be aware of the brand um whether that be locally or in any, any other way so my expectations were, were uh, very low <laughs> in terms of, of lead generation purely from SEO, but also because I, I was kind of reasonably knowledgeable about the concept and I'd, I'd heard, listened to podcasts and things. I had an idea that it wasn't something that was overnight. Um, there's other ways you can do that. I mean, I'll, I'll look at things like Google Ads and paper to click and, and all that kind of stuff. If you want a more short-term fix, then that's the kind of route you can do, but they, they cost more money. Um, whereas with the website, you, you can effectively cost you almost nothing to, to, to write the content and just your time. Um, but my expectations were not that I would be getting leads within three or four months and getting inquiries directly through the kind of more niche elements of the website. And uh, as we touched on, I think I mentioned earlier, I had another one yesterday, so on a different topic from the ones that I'd had before, and I can see. You certainly need to be patient, but it's good to have uh, those initial inquiries and go, well, actually, this this does work. So I know it works now, um, and it is worth putting the time in, even if it is just the odd lead here and there, then it's a lead that I haven't paid for. <laughs> and I don't pay for leads anyway, generally, but it's not cost me anything to, to, to get that opportunity. Um, so no matter what happens, I know that will work. It'll always evolve. I'm certainly not an expert, but um, I know it works. So, but you, you do need to persist with it. I, I guess I was fortunate I've got a kind of loyal client bank and people that refer business things, so it's not my main source of, of leads. It's just a platform for people to reach me, and, and you need more than one source of leads. <laughs> and and yeah. I think everybody knows that. If it's all in one basket, then, then you are going to struggle. So I've, I've got the referrals and uh, existing clients and existing client bank and things like that. Um, and other avenues, and I've got my Google presence and just in terms of locally for Google reviews. But the SEO nationwide is just opening up different things. And, and if it is, I've purposefully, not purposefully, because it was client-led, but I, a lot of the topics that I've written content in are relatively low volume, not things that people are searching for every day. Um, but I don't need that, but it can be nationwide now as well. I can, I can pick up business from across the UK which is those we added bonus ones. It's the kind of icing on the cake. 
Which, because I was going to ask you about that too, in terms of um, because you mentioned there about nationwide, which is great that you've got that catch that you are looking at clients that are nationwide now. However, was local important to you when you were looking at the website? Is that something that you wanted to be? Is somebody is googling mortgage broker Glasgow? Is or mortgage advisor Glasgow? Was that important, or was that just never something that you thought about? No, definitely. I think to go back a wee bit more, it's a website that's about you to some extent, or it's, it's you're part of it, and you're you're the front of the back, the, the the brand. And I'm in Glasgow, despite you might not believe it, because there's sun blaring uh, as we speak. But I, I'm based in Glasgow. I'm, I'm proud to be up in Glasgow in Scotland. Um, so within the website, I don't hide away from that fact. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. Uh, I've got pictures on there of you know uh, local landmarks across Scotland, not just in Glasgow, um, which I, most of my clients are local. I'm not going to say or, or, or Scottish anyway. I'm going to cover quite a broad sector across the central belt of Scotland. But I think for the SEO side of things, the local element is not relevant. People are just looking for somebody that knows what they're talking about. So certainly. Uh, cases recently in Romford, Manchester, completely different areas from from where they might, they're not going to recognise the pictures probably that are on my website, but they'll recognise that I know the answers to the questions that they've got and, and that's where that comes into it. So I think it's good to have both, but I definitely wouldn't be shying away from wherever you are and where you're based. I think these days that's no restriction on um, where you can advise and how you can act. Um, so, but yeah, local is definitely important. That is the bulk of my business is, is, is in Scotland. But um, that's the SEO side is perhaps to broaden that. And, and I guess from a commercial perspective, that uh, potentially allows me to see higher value uh, mortgages and, and uh, things like that that you, you might get down south um, in comparison to, to some areas up here. So, um, so yeah, it's a wee added bonus. Okay. No, no I, and I, I appreciate what you're saying because when I look at your website and it's up to my screen on my right, when I look at it's clear to see you've got local images, you talk about being based in Glasgow but helping people nationwide So it's, you, and the technology you use for, for the ability to do that. And it's a great question. That was just my thought on whether it was because people will niche locally as well. So people will focus their website their social media and everything on that that local their local town their local city their local village depending on where how big and, and where where they're at. So I was just understanding from your point of view that that was is is more not just the the Glasgow side of things. It is Scotland and and venturing south of the border as well into where uh, into England. So and obviously other places in the UK. So it's good to see that. And that was just my just a question whether it was really focused on the local stuff that was that built the start of this, but um clearly your transparency and where you're from and your background and um and the family thing as well, because that's the thing with it you we can understand who you are as a person and getting your personality into the website as well, which is um which is really good. One thing that I just wanted to touch on was because I know you've already sort of said that uh, because structure to me about structuring your working week, structuring when you're doing things to make sure that things happen. And you're just sort of coming in and blowing that water going, well, yeah, I'll do it when it needs doing kind of thing, which is nothing more than I didn't expect from Ross. <laughs> Absolutely not. But, and, and is that because is is just the way that you are? Or is that just the way that you feel that needs to happen with you reacting more with the website rather than than sort of proactive stuff with the website? You don't feel as though you need to structure it, or is that just how you like to work? Given that you you own your own business and own your own brand, yeah, I think it's a latter. I mean, the structure's good to an extent, and I, you've got to have it. <laughs> And, and there is elements of that within my, my, my working week. Small elements, as, as, as you were well aware, but there are things that happen every week. And obviously, seeing clients are very flexible with, with when I'll see them and I'll work, work with them for that side of stuff and focus on the work, the work element of it. But in terms of the, the marketing, I think it's harder sometimes to... I think that 
it's easier to do it spont spontaneously because you've been prompted to do it by a conversation that's happened that's almost given you the content as opposed to if I was to sit down and go, right, I need to write a page about X, Y, Z. That becomes a lot harder um, because not that you're forcing yourself to do it, but it's just not coming from the same source. But as I've touched on, the majority, in fact, pretty much all the content is from client conversations, client uh, circumstance or, or, or uh, things that have happened and inquiries that have come about. Um, so I can't predict when that's going to happen and how that conversation is going to go on an individual basis. So the, the kind of spontaneity about it is, is important. Having said that, sometimes I don't even do it then. I'll just write it down and I've, I've got it there for future and then that's when I'll maybe bring it, bring it uh, to the table. But I need to have had that spark from a client effectively or for a conversation to do it rather than... Uh, it's, I know other people who sometimes kind of reverse engineer that a little bit as well and they'll look for like what, what kind of high volume of searches are there for a certain topic or what's what's what type of client are they wanting um, and that's fine and they can you can potentially write content working back from that but personally I'd rather work the other way kind of more I don't want to say client focused because I don't think that's fair but that's what drives it is, is the conversations that, that I'm having but yeah having my own business that I mean that was the key to everything that I do is so crit critical in it to have that control. I could decide what I'm doing, when I'm doing it, and how I'm doing it um, up to a point. And, and that that was the whole point of initially becoming self-employed, but then um, more recently having Bluefish and, and uh, having the brand to, to, to do my own way. <laughs> uh, and, and I think that's great that that opportunity is there within this industry and, um, Obviously, there's different avenues you can do it, but certainly the way it's worked for me has been been ideal and um, equally good to see how others do it as well. And you can share ideas across the board. I think that the industry has really surprised me. I, I guess I'm almost in my fifth year of it now, and it still surprises me how willing people are to try different things and to share ideas and genuinely try and help each other in the main. And I think that's that's so refreshing that it still seems to be the case, um, even in markets that are sometimes challenging and there's different things going on that people are genuinely helpful and, and want you to succeed. Yeah, I think that because, and with you, that I know there's something that we discussed when we first started even talking uh, and interacting was that you, you've always said that, and I don't think that will ever change. I think because, whether that's because like you, you and I have come from the large corporate world, which was very uh, just a different mentality. And when you've got that freedom, it is having that freedom and having that abundance mentality and helping people out and, and having that. It's just good to have that culture, good good to have that value and work ethos. Actually, it's about helping and sharing each other to then for the benefit of the client ultimately, really. And that's that's the that's the thing with it. And that's ultimately what it's all about it's about making sure that brokers are educated to then run the, a successful business but making sure that the client gets the best advice because it's not easy being a broker as we all know it's not you've got especially when you're first starting out it's where where do you go to where do you turn there's lots of different scenarios and situations from a client's point of view and lenders criteria changes where to go with that and then they come to you because another broker said no, and then you help them out and find out. So clearly there's a knowledge and skill gap with that, right? the broker that they've talked to before, which is not right from a client point of view. So if there is a, an avenue and an option and a solution for that client, it's important to make sure that you, you, you're you going as far down the path as you can before you get that. You know you fully extend explored every single option that you've got, which you clearly do with your clients but what and one thing that you sort of said in there which i totally get where you where if you sat here and thought right it's tuesday morning i've got to create some content it's 10 o'clock i've got to create some content you'll just be i just can't work that way what where i get and you sort of talked about the spark is that sparks can come from anywhere it's just making sure that you know them down and making sure that you have some sort of reference to it to then think, oh, so I, I'm used to email myself. I use an app now, which will just go in there and go, 
if it's about a podcast, it'll be MBB and that's the spark. And then I know that I can search on that and go put anything in MBB and it will give me all my sparks thinking, yeah, I'll talk about that. Because you never know when those sparks are going to hit you and the realisation. But you're not sort of saying you've got to do the podcast or do that blog or create a video or short or reel or whatever at that there at the second but it's knowing that actually when you do want to create content and you do want to add something to your website, you've got somewhere to go to go, do you know what? I've got all these sparks that I've made a note of that I think, right, well, I've got an abundant, like I've got loads of things there to choose from. It's more likely to happen that way than if you sit here and go, right, I need to create some content. You'll sip your coffee, you'll go and make a drink, you'll go and do something else. And then all of a sudden that two hours you booked in to do it, never happens you go all right okay well i'll do it next week i'll do it next week whereas if you've got those things like you from your clients like you say and i get them from other avenues as well thinking oh yeah it'd be great to do that great to, and you never know where that's going to come from you never know like you and i talking that could hit me with a spark and it something has hit me and i made a note of it thinking i need to do that and i'm going to have a look at that you just i've got that then there to to fall back on and think actually I'm, i will do something about it no, 100%. And I think that's why people need to th think long term about that, their overall strategy as well and not get too, like, not be looking too short term, like like people often do. And it's easy to do. I know people are wanting business and wanting leads and things like that. But if you are trying to build something in its whole, then, and it's for the long term, then if, if it if it's not this week, but next week that you write the page, then it's not going to be the end of the world, <laughs> certainly in this context. And, and which is slightly contradictory because I do say, like, do it. <laughs> Make sure you get something out there. But I think um, the evolution of that is a long... I plan to be doing what I'm doing. I plan Bluefish to be around for a long time and to evolve in different ways, perhaps, um, over the future. But the website's always going to be there and it's going to be the foundation of whatever I do. So time-wise, whether... Um, well, apart from anything else, on an SEO point of view, writing a page today is not probably going to have any impact... Or, or get noticed relatively very quickly. It's going to take a while to do that. So a week here or there or whatever isn't going to make any difference. But what's much more important is that what you're writing is actually coming from the heart. Sounds a bit pious, but it's coming from experience. It's coming from something you're actually, it's genuinely trying to help people and get some content out there that, that people will take value from. And if you do that, even if you don't necessarily, because I've got content on my, my website that gets a lot of impressions, a lot of people reading it, and it's for topics that probably wouldn't aren't commercially really that viable, like particular types of construction and thing. But um, it is still helping people. <laughs> it's still building the authority of your website, and it's showing that you're an expert in your field as well. Which, from a Google perspective, is what what they're keen to see as well, not just the kind of low hanging fruit or whatever that that, that you might sometimes um, want. <laughs> but yeah. um, it's important to be a kind of rounded representation of what you are and what, what you know. Definitely. Definitely. Ross, we've sort of, I never thought we'd be sort of chatting for 40, nearly 50 minutes about uh, um, your website and uh, SEO and other things, but um, we have. It's been great to catch up. It's been good to talk on the podcast about you and what your plans and what you've achieved and, and I'm very much in, a, in terms of the niche discussion around SEO on the website, which is a different aspect to uh, what most brokers look at regarding the, the social media and their content compared to the website. But Ross, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for coming back on. And um, it's been great to sort of see the journey over the last 12 months or so of um, Bluefish. I know it's never been trained as long as that, but the journey over that has been great to, uh, to see that. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming back on to podcast and sharing your experiences. No, thanks, Craig. It's been a pleasure, and I'm uh, delighted that I managed to get through it without swearing as well. So, I wasn't going to mention that. I wasn't <laughs> going to mention that. I was just going to sort of think there. That's the longest. Yeah, that that's going to be the longest recording ever of uh, anything, any audio or video of Ross without um, swearing or talking about golf or Rangers or anything like that. But yeah, we won't mention that either. So, uh, but no, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No, it's been a joy, Craig, and uh, thanks for all your support, and uh, hopefully people will get something from this podcast as well. Definitely. Thanks very much, mate.
Thank you for listening to the Mortgage Broker Broadcast, the podcast which helps mortgage brokers at all stages of their mortgage broking career. If you have any questions about this podcast or any topics you want to discuss, or if you're interested in working with me further, then please get in touch.